Hey guys, what's going on? Bobby here. Welcome back to another Skip Barber at Circuit of the Americas video. This is part two of three in this three-part, three-day school series. Uh, today is the most involved day of the three days. Essentially, it is open lapping, so we'll just be running laps around the track. Instructors will be kind of looking at us at every corner around the circuit, just to making sure that we are running the proper line. Uh, braking points, acceleration points, making sure that everything is good for when we start getting the technicalities tomorrow. So, you know, basically just running laps all day. We'll be stopping at the stop box to, you know, get that advice, but a lot of laps today at a higher speed, you know, we'll slowly work up to that, you know, 90, 100% speed, whatever it ends up being at the end of the day. So, you know, yesterday was slow, not, not a lot of laps, but today's gonna be the exact opposite. Lots of laps, lots of speed, really pushing this car. So, really excited to bring you guys along for the day. Let's get at it. The second day started in the classroom, discussing racing flags and what they mean, as well as going over the agenda for the day. Before getting behind the wheel of the F4 cars, we started the day with checkoff rides in street cars, which essentially means that we ran normal hot laps alongside the instructors to make sure that we understood the racing line and to get us prepared for driving that day. After the checkoff rides, it was time to get back in the seat of the formula cars for the stop box exercises. Stop box is the same as open lapping, but the drivers are required to stop at the stop box on the front stretch to receive notes from instructors around the track on how to improve their line. It could be anything from entry speed, exit speed, or apex adjustments. If you completed a decent lap and the instructors didn't have any notes for you, you're able to pass through the stop box and keep on driving. Getting the point through to pass by the stop box was one of the best feelings ever. For the first session, we were given an RPM limit of 4600 to keep us at a lower speed, and by the end of the day, there would be no RPM limit. After our sessions, we would receive notes from the instructors on what to improve on in the next sessions, as well as ride out to different locations of the track to spectate the other group during their stop box exercise. So we are halfway through the day, you know, slowly chipping away at those speeds, but we got a little bit of intermission action here. Uh, a Senna. About to rip some laps. You never know what you see at the Formula One track here. Uh, Circuit of the Americas. Just wait till that thing comes back around. It's gonna rip. But yes, we're slowly working at the uh, speeds, getting faster and faster as the day's gone on. So really excited for the second half of the day. We continued with stop box exercises for the second half of the day. And while on board right here, this is a great opportunity to talk about the racetrack here at Circuit of the Americas. As we are going up here into the first corner, you ascend to the highest point of the track, climbing 133 feet from the front stretch. After you make your way through the flat out turn number two, you're greeted by turns three, four, and five, also known as the S's. You want to try to hit the S's as straight as possible. 
Then you're greeted with some very flowy corners through turn six through nine. Turn 10 is very fun. It's a blind corner that takes you downhill to turn 11. Turn 11 sets you up for the long 0.6 mile backstretch. You'll go from the top end of sixth gear all the way down to second or third gear, depending on how fast you're going, as you enter turn 12, which enters you into the stadium section of the track, consisting of consecutive hairpin turns. Turn 15 is another one of Coda's more technical corners, as there are many different ways to execute the corner. Some drivers like to keep it narrow on entry, while others take it out very wide to try to increase their speed on exit. Following turn 15, you're greeted by the long downhill right-hand sweeper around the Grand Plaza and famous viewing tower. In the second to last corner, you have to gamble to find the right amount of car control and speed to carry you into the final corner, turn 20, which is a 90 degree turn leading you back to the front stretch. And that's a lap around the very technical and fun track here at Circuit of the Americas. Towards the end of the day, I was leaving the stop box and making my way into the final corner in about 2 minutes and 30 seconds, which is roughly 15 seconds off of what the United States Formula 4 Series qualifying times were. Not too shabby for the first time pushing the car out on the racetrack. Absolutely wild. You know, I, the big thing that you've seen on the channel and the thing that I do a lot of is the four cycle Briggs 206 motor. Uh, and uh, you know that, you know, you, you use basically the throttle like an on and off switch with that, you know, and it's all about momentum. It's all about, you know, trying to keep it going forward. And uh, obviously the hard tires on those carts, man, they just, you can slide them all around. This thing demands respect throttle control, braking control, trail braking, which I never really understood until I came here and kind of learned um, what it actually was. I thought I knew what trail braking was, but I didn't. And you know, really just pushing a car to the limit, but you know, a Margay Ignite K3 versus this, my galley Formula 4 machine with the, the Ford EcoBoost in it. It's a big difference, big difference. But it is just, you know, almost, you know, while it is different, it's a, uh, it's pretty similar too. You know, it's fundamentals of racing kind of transfer right back over in this machine so super awesome second day a lot of laps excited for tomorrow we're gonna have some hot lapping so no more stop box we'll be able to just kind of keep it consistent keep it rolling and to really go on a more endurance level of running some laps and then with some uh, technicality starts flags things of that sort so super pumped for the final day of a man day two what an experience formula four at circuit of the americas and I feel like I'm doing pretty good. So um, I'm sure the instructors will have notes that'll uh, bring you back down to a more modest level. But uh, you know, all in all, just super awesome experience and, and taking in a lot here, a lot of education here at Skip Barber. Having a blast. Thanks for watching. See you guys in part three.